The title of my word today is, Are You Prepared for the Day of the Lord? That's the topic. And we are going to talk about that. We learn what God has to say to us this morning. And He will bless us abundantly. Are you prepared for the day of the Lord? It's very, very important because from Joel onwards to Revelation, the day of the Lord has appeared 23 times in the Bible. Right? From Joel onwards to the book of Revelation, the day of the Lord has appeared 23 times in the Bible. And it is very important for us to understand that God wants to bless us and He wants to set us free so that we will live in the freedom of Christ that only comes forth from Him and that will cause us to be in a state of preparedness in the presence of God so that we will be fruitful in His kingdom and we will enter into those gates with thanksgiving and dwell in His presence all the days of our lives. And that's what God desires. And that's what He uh, expects from us as a people of God. And by the way, that just let me also let you know that this evening at 6 p.m. we have got baptism service. What a baptism service in our place, at our residence at 6 p.m. sharp. So remember that. All the candidates, you're very welcome to be there at, by 4 to 6. And so we will have a nice time of fellowship together and God will bless us abundantly. So 6 p.m. at our place in Murdiff, we'll gather for water baptism service and you're very welcome to come in with your family and your friends. Praise the Lord. And uh, that is also one of the steps to get prepared to enter into that place that God has destined for us. And uh, if you would turn with me to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 10, the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. It says, but concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need that I should write to you. Paul is writing to the church at Thessalonica. And he says, concerning the times and the seasons, he says, you don't have to be unaware, it's concerning the times and the seasons of the, of the end of the days. That's what he's saying. And when he says that, he says, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. How's the day of the Lord going to come? Like a thief in the night. In the night. And he says that you know it very well. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape. But you, brothers, and are not in darkness. I like that word. What he's saying? You, brothers and sisters, you, the church, you, the body of Jesus Christ, you are the church of Jesus Christ. You no longer live in darkness, but you live in the light. That's what Paul is reminding to the church in Thessalonica. And he says that, but you brethren are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. It's a very important statement that Apostle Paul is writing to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, you are not living in darkness. People, those who are living in darkness, though they call themselves Christians, probably will not be aware of the day of the Lord when it will come as a thief in the night. You know, it is like when Jesus will appear all of a sudden, they will not realize because they will still be in their darkness. They will be still grappling with the sins. They will be still struggling to overcome the difficulties. And I'm talking about their sinful difficulties where they're grappling to overcome sin and they have no clear understanding that when Jesus is about to come. But he says to the church, and that is a very positive note to the church. He says to the church, you do not live in darkness. And I like that scripture. That I do not live in darkness, I live in the light. And I will know for sure that when Jesus will come, I will be in a state of preparedness. Like those five virgins who were ready with oil in the lamp and with their wicks. 
lights burning and they trimmed and burning and the lamps had light so when the bridegroom came they entered in and they went away with the bridegroom hallelujah now when Jesus was giving the parable of the kingdom and when he was talking about the parable of the wise the ten wise women the five were ready and the five were not ready indicates that when Jesus would come probably 50% of the church will not be in a state of preparedness to meet Jesus when he comes to take his church away are you with me? That means Jesus, when he was giving a parable, it does give us an understanding that the church, 50% of the church, will only be ready when Jesus will come in there to take the church. And therefore, my question to you today, to the church, is that is the church prepared for the day of the Lord? Is a question that will always come to our mind. Jesus was asking the same question. When the Son of Man will come on this earth, will he find faith? He was talking to his church. He was not talking to the unbelievers outside. He was talking to his people. He was talking to his church. And he was talking to the ones who were so-called Christians. So-called people. Those who have believed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is talking to them that when the Son of Man will come, will he find faith in them? And that's the same question that hits us again and again. That am I in a state of preparedness that when Jesus comes, I will know the times. I will know the seasons. I will be aware. My spirit will be ready. I will be prompt. I will be responsive. I will be responsible. I will be accountable. And I will know for sure that my calling that God has placed upon me is not in vain. And God will do that work that He has begun in my life. He will also finish it for me in my life. And that's the challenge that we face this day today. And so Paul is encouraging the church. And he says, you are all sons of light in verse 5. You are what? All sons of light. Say, I'm son of light. I'm son of light. Because my God is light. And the book of 1 John says that those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ have become the children of light. Because light begets light. Fire begets fire. Anointing of God begets anointed ones of God. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God, the incorruptible Word of God, begets, begets incorruptible people because they are sealed and encapsulated in the Word of the Living Father. And therefore no power of Satan and no power of man can ever demean them and put them down because they will always be overcomers because they are encapsulated in the Word of God. And it's important. So he says you are all sons of light.